Well, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Whether you feel like rejoicing or not, do it anyway. Because <laughs> he has made it. Whatever the day has wrought, it's better now. We're gathered here to study his word. And uh, you cannot do the Lord. Amen. I hath not seen, ear hath not heard what he's prepared for us. We're just not able to take it yet. Can you imagine that? I mean, I can really imagine. Can't you? And we can't imagine. We're either in the biggest fairy tale ever proposed or passed on to humanity, or we got it. And I choose to believe we've got it. It is a faith walk with the Lord. And um, things on this earth are kind of relative, but things with God are absolute. He is, he is absolute, and he absolutely wants us in heaven. So you're going to have to fight against him if you don't go. That's the truth. Now, how he's doing with all these billions in, uh, of people and that, I can't even imagine. And I'm a numbers guy, okay? And not the kind of numbers that some of you are interested in before you came to the Lord. <laughs> Brother Moss got it. <laughs> and... Uh, but anyway, it is amazing. It's amazing. You realize that the world is saying it is a weak crutch to have faith in God. Well, you know what they're doing. They're putting their faith in something that isn't God. You cannot live without faith in something. Amen. You do not have the choice that you don't have to have faith. It's just a matter of choosing where you're going to put your faith. And... Um, and he's an awesome God that he has brought his word to us and continues to bring it through his spirit. And you can make it if you want it. And just like the pastor down to Gray's Chapel down in Eastern Shore, Maryland, after that service, when his wife, this was the pastor's wife, and two other ladies had received the Holy Ghost, got up in the pulpit, jumped up and down, and I, if I do it, I'll hurt myself. Okay, jumped up and down and said, if you didn't get anything today, you didn't want it. And uh, so it's awesome what the Lord's doing. And so because we're in the Lord, we had a great day. We had a great day because we're in the Lord. It's going to get better over there because these bodies are going to get better. And uh, But we're glad you're here. Steve and Regina are about... I don't know how many hours out of London. They are out of Nigeria. If you've been praying for them, they made it out. <laughs> but anyway, I'm laughing about it. But it's 170 million people in, the, in a land just a little bit bigger than the state of Texas. Just think the East Coast here is 50 million. Three times the East Coast here in the United States. And they're just two missionaries. And, of course, they're training leaders and teachers of the Word of God as fast as they can. And this congregation has uh, contributed to it, but we're going to contribute more to it. In training their teachers, because of Steve's degrees, they recognize, the government recognizes that he's credible to train people to be uh, accredited schools. And so it's a plus, you see. And so we're a part of what's happening in Nigeria, not just with our financial report, our financial giving every month, but also contributing in that fashion. So keep praying they arrive safely tomorrow. And uh, uh, any special needs? Brother John. Amen. Other needs? Sister Betty. All right. Brother Rick. Oh, Brother Mike. So, look like Rick's hand behind you. <laughs> Go ahead. Right, Sister Carol. Pray also that when you're praying for cancer, pray against the spirit of cancer. Now, I'm not trying to be spooky about all requests.
Okay. I've been, I've been mentioning to Anna Marie Gonzalez, who is in Oregon. She's in her 40s. And got, it's recurred again, and she's fourth stage. Let's ask God's blessing now. Lord Jesus, thank you for the opportunity of giving. We know you can. We'll do something a little different. I like uh, some praises. Don't all speak at once. Somebody praise the Lord. Sister, ladies before gentlemen. Sister Lori. Amen. Let's give him a hand. Arash. Amen. Amen. Brother Mike. All right. Peace that passeth all understanding. Keep in our hearts and minds. Amen. Sister. Amen. 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 I'm going to thank the Lord for letting me go to sleep last night. <laughs> See, you have both ends of the spectrum. <laughs> Amen. Sister Carol. Amen. Amen. S Sister Iris. His love. Amen. No one can love you like Jesus. Brother Wayne. For his word. Amen. Sister Sherry. Amen. Brother Joe. Amen. He must have got it from his womb or his mother's womb. <laughs> Amen. Hey, that is great. That is great. Amen. Anyone else? Anyone else? Amen. Acts chapter 13, verse 22. I'm going to talk about our heart. Acts 13, 22. I really, and I might give you 21, but I'm going to, just for continuity. And afterwards, they desired a king. This is 21. And God gave unto them Saul, the son of Sis, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by a space of 40 years. And when he had removed him, that's 22. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom he also gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you, Lord, God, for your word. And we're asking you, Lord Jesus, to bless us tonight with understanding, Lord. Yes, wonderful Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, did God have a bad night when he said that? The guy hanging out at home, not in the battle. 
then gets tempted with another man's wife and eventually has the man killed. Man after God's own heart? This will not be depressing when we finish. What? What's God saying? What is God saying? A man after mine own heart? See, here's the difficulty. The heart he's talking about isn't what's keeping us alive, pumping the blood through our body. But it is, it is the center of our being, our soul, our spirit. And the best he can do in a physical standpoint is call it our heart. And the Bible emphatically says, judge not that you be not judged. Now, I might, I might have opinion about Owen. I might be right and I might be wrong, but there's one thing I cannot judge, his heart. Cannot do it. Cannot do it. In fact, we can't, we can't judge anybody's heart except our own. God looked at David and said, I'm going to appoint him because he's a man after my own heart. It's astounded me these 46 plus years that I have had the baptism of the Holy Ghost and, and uh, believed in the word literal, that it is the literal word of God and it's put in form that I can understand it. And I have been astounded at how some folks can go through such tough times and they came, come out of it worshiping God. And there's some other folks that can go through such trivial stuff and walk away from God for what looked like no apparent legitimate reason. And the difficulty you see is, I can't see a person's heart. By the way, it's a relief. You'll have a whole lot better chance, a better fellowship with people if you realize that you can't see their heart. Now that doesn't mean because you can't see their heart that you should fellowship in things that bring conviction to you. But literally, you cannot see a person's heart. You do not know their heart. And God makes this statement here related to David, that this is a man after mine own heart. And yet what I stated to you was, you know, David's father didn't even care enough about him that when Samuel was sent by God to anoint a new king because Saul had failed, that David wasn't even considered as one of his sons. Wasn't even considered. In fact, David wasn't even respected very well, I just said to you, by his own father, let alone his brothers, that when he comes to bring them something to eat and to check on how it's going with the fight against the Philistines, you know, they rebuke him. Even when he's going to take the challenge of going against Goliath. David at one time in his life was running around with several hundred uh, outlaws. What did God see in David? God saw in David that when David got in a jam, he didn't blame God, he didn't blame the people around him. He took responsibility for himself and what the consequences were. And God has seen in David a flawed person like every one of us. And I'm not here to justify sin or you doing wrong against somebody or yourself. But I'm here to tell you the reason God tells us that we best not judge one another or we're going to be judged because we cannot see the heart. Now you see, the scientific training that I went through just naturally, I'm talking about related to business and related to rockets and, and things. The scientific training, you know, that part of my brain tried to figure out what is it about a person that they're going to be receptive to the Word of God and they're going to reach out to God so that I could figure out how best to bring the Word of God to somebody and I've had to surrender because I cannot see the heart. 
But what we can realize is God does see the heart. And that we don't have to worry about somebody else's heart. We need to be concerned about our own heart. But the fact of the matter is God made a proclamation towards David that if we would have judged David, said David failed. That David should have been an outcast. Now David had consequences for what he did and God didn't condone his misbehavior related to wife, related to child. When push came to shove and the servants were scared to death to come and tell this father that his child had just died, David washed his face and worshiped God. Sword never left his household. He didn't blame God. So I'm here to tell you tonight that all of us have consequences of sin. And you can make up your mind to condemn yourself or justify yourself or just plain forgive yourself as you turn to God and realize he's a God that's looking at your heart. Create a clean heart within me, O God, and renew a right spirit, David prayed. So it really is, since Calvary, it really is a personal battle. It really is, even though we fellowship together and we minister to one another and we, we're, we're family and we're family of God and we're helping one another, when push comes to shove, it's you and Jesus. And you're going to make mistakes. I'm not saying, I'm not standing here and telling you and encouraging you to, do, to go out and try to do something wrong and see if God forgives you or not. There are consequences of the mistakes of life. We live with those consequences. You know, even the consequences of sin that I have family coming. And at a very young age, there was major pressure because of consequences of sin. But you know, push comes to shove when I look at those four nieces, if it hadn't been for my dad, they wouldn't have existed. I'm not justifying the sin, I'm telling about the benefit that here's four human beings that are absolutely astounded they ha that they have Uncle James. <laughs> Let alone that he's a Pentecostal preacher. When I went to nephew James's funeral, Stephen, Regina, and I, and we stayed in the embassy suites, the two of them, Jeannie and Lori and their husbands, found out we were staying there and they moved. But before the weekend was over, the Lord had intervened and here they are, all coming here and there. If Malia has anything to say about it, they're all coming to church Sunday morning. We're not talking about the pain that becomes, we're not trying to justify the pain that results because of sin. But we're saying we've got a God that's still looking at the heart. And he will create in you a clean heart. He will answer your prayer to forgive you. He will make a way when there doesn't seem a way. He is going to take the pain away forever of the failures of life because you can't cast too many stones and not have some hit you in the head. I am not justifying sin and I encourage you. Don't sin. But you have an advocate with the Father that you don't have to live under the curse of the sin. The consequences, yes, but not the curse of the sin, which is eternal damnation. Because God, God will create a clean heart. Now, what I want to do is look at a very familiar chapter in Psalms to find out what David's, what David's heart was like. See what we can find out from Psalms 23, how David, who was this guy that messed up and had difficulty. Yes, he had justification, you say, because he was rejected by his own family, his brothers, his dad, and so on. 
But the only one that hurts out of that when sin comes in not, not, is the person who has compounded the hurt. So let's look at Psalm 23 with the idea of seeing if we can get a glimpse of David's heart. And if we get a glimpse of David's heart, can we decide that that pattern of his heart, that what God looked at, and he looks at each one of us independently. So I you realize everybody's welcome here. When we come with our hang-ups, we come with our past, we come with our personality, we come with our life, just seems almost impossible, you see, that God really welcomes us. Now David made a declaration starting off Psalm 23, and this is verse 1, hopefully behind me. The Lord is my shepherd. What a bombastic statement. What right did David have to say that the Lord was his shepherd? that he was taking care of him. What was crying out from David's mouth when he said, the Lord is my shepherd? It wasn't the disappointments and failures and you know, the loss of a child because of his sin. The loss of a good man on a battlefield because of his sin. Future loss of, you know, Absalom, Absalom, my son Absalom. But he never accused God. What he made the decoration is, he made a decoration that he encourages every one of us. The Lord is my shepherd. No matter where I'm coming from, I can declare before God, because he's no respecter of person. Even though our circumstances, every single one of us is different. I can declare unto the Lord, the Lord is my shepherd. Now how he's going to shepherd me is going to be a lot different than what he, how he shepherds you. But he's going to shepherd us. He knows how to do it just right. He knows our heart. He knows. Because see, the mind can't cry out that. The heart has to reach out to that. Because the mind says, what right do we have to call the Lord our shepherd? Anyone here feel deserving to have the Lord be your shepherd? Really? You say, well, I'll pick up all these bad people around that, you know, socially are unacceptable and stuff. And... You know, but, you know, he wants to be their shepherd, too. But how can we say, the Lord is my shepherd? How could David say, the Lord is my shepherd, when he so miserably failed? The baby died. Because of David. The baby died because of David. Uh, this is going to sound kind of strange, but if you cooperate with me. Have you ever had some jerks in your life? The rest of you haven't? Don't just nod your head. Get your hand up. <laughs> you ever had any, any real jerks in your life? Now you say, well, that's awfully judgmental. <laughs> well, they sure made it miserable for me. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. But in spite of that, we're going to blame God for the jerks or are we going to say, the Lord is my shepherd? The Lord is my shepherd. How can we make that claim? We don't make that claim when things are going really well. We're going to make that claim. We need to make that claim when things are not looking so hot. When we're misunderstood, when we don't know our path, when things are happening to our body, our minds are having struggle in that. Can we make the, can, can we have the foundation? Can we, can we as, like David did, like David did, a man after God's own heart, can we have a heart so anxious for God that we realize how bad we need him, but we're not gonna let anyone shepherd us but, G, but Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd. Now I can promise you that your own mind is going to argue with you. Your own spirit is going to have a wrestling match with you about it. They'll remind you, you see, or even outside spirits will remind you, or even outside people will remind you what a jerk you are at times.
But David said, in spite of it all, the Lord is my shepherd. Foundational. What can separate me from the love of God? And list, list all that stuff. Not if, like David said, my heart is fixed, O oh Lord, my heart is fixed. Anybody had anything really unfair happen to you in life? I mean, it, was, it didn't take any, any analysis, anything. It, it was just flat unfair. Unfair. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord, not going to let things, not going to let circumstances, not going to let even justification of unfairness separate me from the fact that the Lord is my shepherd even though I can't see it in the moment. Can't see it in the moment. And David, you see, had a heart that God saw that when push came to shove, he was going to let God be his shepherd. Rejected by family, rejected by siblings, rejected by the previous king, rejected by son. My heart is fixed, O oh Lord. Now you don't know if it's fixed or not until it gets tried. You going through something now that seems unfair? Nobody understands? The Lord does. Say, why doesn't he fix it? Well, why don't you ask him? But the foundation you see is nothing but the Lord is my shepherd. Now I can promise you for one half hour until we leave, I can keep going on with this thought. <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd. But I got five and a half more verses to go, so we're not done yet. You got it? The foundation. What's, what David said, no matter what happens, no matter how much somebody does me or I've gone wrong, my heart is fixed, the Lord is my shepherd. Not turning over my life to anybody else, the Lord is my shepherd. Not turning over to another human being, some false gods or money or anything else in this world. The Lord is my shepherd. And then he made this bombastic statement. I shall not want. Did not say I shall not need. Now how can a man say I shall not want? Anybody in here never had any wants? <laughs> how can he say that? How can that be part of the word of God? I shall not want. Because what happens is, there's my wife's favorite verse, and I probably butcher it trying to quote it, but delight yourself in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord. You know what happens when you delight yourself in the Lord? His desires and your desires match up. Now, I understand. Well, that's just a fake Christian principle of trying to justify bad. Baloney. Delight yourself in the Lord and you give the desires of your heart because the desires of your heart become his desires. When you're walking with him, he doesn't change, you do. And it isn't bad. And he's so patient. So patient so that we can realize, I shall not want. I'm talking about God's evaluation of a person. When he, are you gonna give him a heart that's fixed? It's your choice, nobody can, nobody can take it away. You can give it away, but they can't steal it from you. No matter what the circumstances of life or how unfair they've been, or, the, or and all the justification under human logic, my heart is fixed, O oh Lord. I shall not want. I shall not want. Verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. 
you know what I found? I, 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 you probably know this, but I'm a risk taker. I'm not afraid of anything, John. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I'm not. Now, my body's letting me down a little bit now, where it wasn't before. <laughs> All right, I'll admit that to you. But I'm still a risk taker. Risk taker. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Do you want I recognized? The scripture that says, be still and know that I'm God. What do you mean be still? I got all this pressure. Where's it coming from? Probably internal. Maybe some external. It's amazing what the presence of God. Your circumstances haven't changed. It's like the person that came a number of years ago into my office and said, I got a problem. I said, what's the problem? He said, I don't have any friends. And I looked at him, I said, well, I'm not much, but I'm your friend. <laughs> and it was true, I thought it was. They hadn't considered me, Peter, that I was their friend. Now, again, I wasn't much, but... Okay, he maketh me, he maketh me, see if he's your shepherd and your heart is fixed, he'll make you lie down in green pastures. And he's going to lead you by still waters. I say, well, that, that's Pollyanna uh, theory. That's Pollyanna gospel. That's, you know, not facing reality of life. Oh, the peace of the Holy Ghost. Oh, the presence of God. That plane's just passing over. It's not landing. It's landing at Philly. They come this way sometimes. <laughs> so what happens in the midst of whatever the trouble is, if you let the Lord be your shepherd, the Lord is my shepherd. He didn't even ask God permission for to make that statement. Do you realize that? God wants you to declare that he's your shepherd. Well, preacher, you don't understand the things that have happened to me in life. It's hard. So what? It's your choice. Because he won't let you down. You know how miracles take place? They have to have some circumstance that cries a miracle. <laughs> okay, who wants to volunteer for a miracle? <laughs> I mean, something that, that I pick. <laughs> no, miracles. And in the midst of it, in the midst, you see, He's saying, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. There's peace. And you know, Pentecostals are noted for being loud, speaking in tongues, loud, but no services when there's a hush. That it just, it, it's, it's like a, a mist that is absolute peace and quiet. It's him. It's not me. It's him. It's him. If he says, be still and know that I'm God, is he telling you something you can't do? Now look, most folks in here have had to either step up and take control or just quit and lay down in a fetal position and you wouldn't be here tonight if you were doing that. I'm not minimizing the world that we're living in. 
I'm not minimizing the things that can happen in a human fashion to people's lives. I am not minis minimizing the heartbreak that ha he restoreth my soul. At night that I started speaking in tongues, I didn't have one thought that I was going to grieve that God doesn't care. If it had lasted more than a few minutes, I couldn't have stood it. He grieves for those that are far, far from him. But do you know what he does? He puts within the heart of his people that for one person that comes to the Lord, all the angels in heaven rejoice. You say, well, what a mess I've made. Come on, let the angels rejoice. Talking about our heart. We cannot perform well enough. We can't lay down a new set of 1,000 commandments instead of 10 and cover all that's into the world. We're going to be saved because he saves us by his grace through our faith in him. But we don't have to wait to go to heaven for him to be our shepherd. It leads me by still waters. Let's me lay down in green pastures. I'm talking about in the midst of trial, in the midst of pain, in the midst of suffering. And in verse 4 it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Let me suggest to you that if you want to order anyone around, order the devil and all his followers around. Don't listen to them, just order them. And then turn your back on them and forget them. Now that sounds like South Lansing hoodlum. Don't give him any space. And you can do it in the name of Jesus. And the reason you can't is because the Lord's your shepherd. Yeah, you're like a sheep among wolves. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. If you hear a voice in your head saying that God's not with you, that he's rejected you, you know you're listening to a spirit that's not God. I will never leave you nor forsake you, he says. He said, well, doesn't he care that I've blown it? Sure, because he doesn't want you in pain. But choose to let him be your shepherd. I am not somebody that doesn't face life with reality. I just happen to know about the presence of God when he's your shepherd of what can happen in the midst of major struggle. He said, for thou art with me, Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you a story, story about rod and staff on, uh, on your pastor when he was a kid. He hated his thinking chair. And, and uh, as energetic as you know he was, just even by knowing him now, energetic. He hated his thinking chair. And he had to sit there for 15 minutes. No, he could not put his feet in the chair and his head on the floor. He had to sit in his thinking chair. That's the staff. 
Now what he wanted and what he would say to me is, Dad, please give me a spank and let's get this over with. He wanted the rod. So whether it's the rod or the staff, you see, he's going to take, he is not out to punish us. He's out to guide us. Said, thy rod and thy staff, they're going to comfort us. Now, I don't know how a rod can comfort you if, it in, if it's not in the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about making a de declaration tonight and forever. The Lord is my shepherd. Let your heart be fixed. Let your heart be fixed. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Sure, that's where I want to eat. <laughs> oh, yeah. I like being around people that don't want to be with me. <laughs> Can't wait till it's over and they can go home. <laughs> Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. In other words, what is happening is, you become an irritant. They don't like that you're doing so well. <laughs> it's conviction. Because what happens is God wants those enemies to become your friends. Thou anointest my head with oil. In other words, his Holy Spirit is with us. Uh, I'm going to ask, did anybody have a perfect day today? I, I'm, I, I mean perfect, hard tech, core, perfect day. Um, So where was God when you weren't having good time? He was there. He was still your shepherd. Still your shepherd. Thou anointest my head with oil. In other words, his presence is not going to leave us. He's there 24-7. My cup runneth over. It's not a cheapskate. And then he says, Surely, goodness and mercy. When's the last time you needed mercy? How many hours ago? Not days. Could be right here in the middle of this service you wanted to get over with. Mercy, Lord. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What a decoration. He starts out with a decoration, the Lord is my shepherd. He didn't ask him to be a shepherd. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. Now God is talking about David. That's, a, that's somebody who's got a heart like God's heart. No matter what's gonna happen to me, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Surely goodness and mercy is going to be following me all the days of my life. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. How can you make that statement? Your heart. Your heart's got to rule your mind. And I'm not talking about you know the 18 year old that's fallen in love for the first time and says I just can't help it. Uh-uh. God is looking for hearts that are fixed. Do you know what you'll find? You won't have to go outside the kingdom of God, the, the church. You won't have to go outside the fellowship of God's people to find an excuse to just leave. 
will not have to. I'm not trying to just justify us, but you know, Owen and I know, not just because we're old, that we, that, that we need God. Not to just get up in the morning. We need him then, too. You know, at our age, we don't have any trouble waking up, do we? Staying up. <laughs> what happens, you see, is that life is life. And what's going to be the center of your life? What does your heart have to say? Are you trying to bargain with God so that, oh God, just if this or just if that? How about the Lord is my shepherd? And a man that absolutely broke the Ten Commandments became a man after God's own heart. So we've got a chance. But we have to get our heart fixed on God. Finishing with this, I said it in the beginning, your heart is between you and him. If you let somebody affect your heart, it's still between you and him. No one can steal you from the kingdom of God. Your heart is between you and him. The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Life is unfair. Life is a bust at times. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. So here was a fallible man that had God's attention because of his heart and required God to take disciplinary action at times to keep him going keep David going in a straight fashion. And there were consequences that affected the rest of his life. But the Lord continued to be a shepherd. Are you going to go out and sin just to see if you get the mercy of God? God forbid. You won't even have to try. You're going to blow it and you won't even have to try. But if your heart is fixed, if your heart is fixed, I uh, looked at a man's picture tonight in preparation for this thing with the family. And, uh, man, I wish I had his looks, Owen. The fellow's picture that I looked at. Good-looking guy. Good-looking guy. My father. Till I was 31, I hated him. Flat out hated him. Not because of what he did to me, but what he did to my mother. And when I was nine years old and looking at that bassinet, Johnny was such a cute little baby. And then for several weeks' time, he had over 200 convulsions. Couldn't afford to be in the hospital, so he just died in her home. Kind of affects a nine-year-old. Really did. And two years from the day, the exact day, we get notice that my father has had an automobile accident and killed. Now I got a bigger problem. 
Now I'm released, and so I don't have to tell kids that my dad just left us. I can say he's dead. But now I've got a problem, because I wanted to grow up and show him he was wrong. Say, man, I better find a new church with this guy in the pulpit. And you've all got similar stories. You really do, I know that. I'm not saying that. But I'm telling you, I needed the Holy Ghost. I needed the Holy Ghost. And the only one that knew I needed the Holy Ghost was God. I'm talking about the Lord becoming our shepherd. If you can make it without Christ in you, the hope of glory, you're kidding yourself. You're kidding yourself. Man. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. Also looked at a picture of a lady. Oh my goodness, Owen. Oh my, 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 my. Oh my. Can never imagine my mother stretched out in front of a church speaking in tongues. Not that quiet lady. And then it was her last service that he filled with the Holy Ghost. Don't try to talk me out of it. You don't have a shot about the power of the Holy Ghost. You don't have a shot telling me you don't need it. And you don't have a shot saying it isn't necessary because I'm just telling you that's only the piece of the story of the mess that Christ had to do in me. I argued with God for three years about whether he called me to preach or not. Because I knew he had to be making a mistake and it was a figment of my imagination. I'm just telling you, you can declare the Lord is my shepherd and nobody can take it away from you. And he'll provide still waters even in the midst of the temptations and trials and pressures of your enemies, he is your shepherd. And he'll say you had a heart just like David's heart. My heart is fixed, O oh Lord, I'm with you all the way. And I want everything you want for me, Jesus. Awesome God. Awesome God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise your wonderful name, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, precious Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Praise your wonderful name. God, thank you. Lord, we thank you. Yes, precious Savior. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We're not in a contest. We're not in a performance test. We're in a relationship together because of the goodness of God. And he's an awesome God. Amen. And I can declare to you, that if he could, and I no way match up to David, but if he can save David and I, he can save you. 
if you want it. Amen. And if you don't want it, nobody can make you want it. Because it's all about your heart. Let's stand. Oh, we love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord Jesus. Claim him as your shepherd. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Next time the voice in your head or your own voice or whatever it is starts the condemnation and criticism, repeat many times until I'm, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I'm talking about performance tests. I'm talking about a fo focusing on the King of Kings and Lord of Lords who is our shepherd. He is taking care of us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And he will not let you down. We love you, Jesus. We magnify you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise your wonderful name. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God bless you. See you Sunday.